The White House today unveiled President Trump's long-awaited tax plan. And despite the hype, the proposal was short on details. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and National Economic Council Director Gary Cohn gave an interview but said many of the details will be worked out in collaboration with Congress. The plan would reduce the number of individual tax brackets from seven to three, double the standard deduction and repeal the estate tax. For businesses, it would cut the corporate tax rate from 35 to 15 percent and eliminate tax breaks for what the Trump administration calls special interests. The president is going to seize this opportunity by leading the most significant tax reform legislation since 1986 and one of the biggest tax cuts in the American history. Earlier, I spoke with Chief White House Correspondent Major Garrett. He attended the briefing. Here's a question to ask yourself. When it's 100 days and you haven't done tax reform and you don't have a significant legislative accomplishment to point to, what do you do? You rush something out for public consumption. And I'm telling you, a flimsy one piece of paper that doesn't even have income brackets for new tax rates on it can only be described as the most minimal effort to set in motion tax reform. This piece of paper has far less detail than any proposal I've ever seen on tax reform introduced in Washington, and I've been here since 1990. There are no revenue estimates for this tax, return, tax proposal, reform proposal. There aren't even brackets. We have seven income brackets now. They are delineated by very precise income numbers. He, the president, according to this piece of paper, wants to reduce those seven brackets to three. What incomes would be affected? We don't know. So a very simple question was asked. If you're making $60,000 median income in this country and your family of four, how much of a tax cut would you receive? No information whatsoever. Would this pay for itself? The Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin implied that it might because there will be, in addition to all these tax rate reductions, both on the personal and corporate side, there would be an elimination of significant current tax deductions, many he asserted, exercised and claimed by those in the upper income categories. What are they? Well, I found one answer out. Currently under the tax code, you can deduct your income taxes at the state and local level. That will be eliminated. Maybe some others would be as well. What this one thing does tell us, this one page summary, is that charitable deductions will still be claimed as acceptable deductions, as will mortgage interest, but everything else may be up for grabs. But in the main, there is so much less known about this tax reform pro proposal than could be known if the effort were in fact the byproduct, as was asserted repeatedly on this podium, it were a product of lengthy meetings and elaborate construction, not only of income tax brackets, revenue implications, and some of the granular questions about the way tax code exists now and how they want to change it in the future. All of those details were left to future negotiations with Congress. So what I can tell you about this tax reform proposal is this. It is a start. It is a flimsy start to a very important and very big issue and lots of details have to emerge and if the American public wants to know how any of these tax changes might affect the President of the United States, they're going to have to continue to wonder because as the Treasury Secretary just made clear, the President has no intention of releasing his tax returns so the public can judge exactly what these changes would mean to him. So, Major, when Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, says they're going to get this done by this year, is that just bravado or is this a realistic timeline? I don't think that's unrealistic. I think there is tremendous appetite within the Republican-controlled Congress to move on this. And they do have a general sense of agreement about what to do and how to attack tax reform. But one of the key issues that has to be grappled with here is whether or not whatever proposal emerges in those negotiations with Republicans, what effect it will have on the deficit and the debt. Two different things. Deficit is the annual difference between what this government takes in in revenue and what it spends. And then the accumulated debt is every deficit and every year before that and how it creates 
a larger debt. There will be many Republicans who will be gun-shy of a tax reform proposal that increases the deficit by large amounts. We don't know any of those details yet. And the other aspect of this, still to be determined, is what is the political ability of this White House to encourage members of Congress to simplify and thereby eliminate lots of deductions that got into the tax code in the first place because they had political support. Eroding those or erasing those deductions will be a political challenge for this White House. We have no idea yet how successful it will be. And Major, we're hearing that the president wants to sign an executive order to withdraw from NAFTA. What are you hearing and who's authoring this executive order? All right, that's in the pipeline. And as I've often said, you should cautiously await the fine print of any executive order mentioned by this administration that is still in the pipeline. The question about NAFTA is up for grabs. This administration has signaled to Congress it wants to renegotiate, possibly withdraw from NAFTA. There are many steps that are much more important to that process than any executive order that might indicate that wish or suggest to Congress that's a road the White House wants to go on. That's pretty much known, a renegotiation or walking away from NAFTA. But Congress has to have first a confirmed a United States trade representative, then it has to approve fast-track authority to give the president any ability to put forward a renegotiated North American free trade agreement before Congress. Many, many steps. What I would suggest is conversation about an executive order on this front is meant yet again to get the attention of Canada on two currently simmering trade disputes, one over milk and one over softwood lumber. That's a part of a conversation that can possibly, this administration hopes, be expedited or moved in a positive direction by the mere threat of withdrawing from NAFTA. So I would describe this as an executive order currently masquerading as a bargaining chip. All right, Chief White House Correspondent Major Garrett, thank you very much, Major.